Mm-mm-mm. Oh, it's a beautiful day. The difference between me and Bono is minuscule. I mean, it's hard to, you know how many times I get mistaken for Bono on the streets? It's crazy. Uh, AOA Podcast back for another episode. Oh my goodness, look at all the beautiful people in the live chat. Let's say hi to everybody. Miss Justice, TGIF, I hear that. Raven, Brian, uh, Mercury, Paul. Oh my goodness, look at everybody's here. Robin. So nice to see all you beautiful people joining us on the live chat. Will, how's it going? Other Will, I'm oh, sorry, Will Ma, there you go, covering everybody. Uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or Spotify, appreciate it. Hit whatever like button you have in front of you. Hit whatever share button you have in front of you. Again, you guys uh, help keep the podcast growing to what it is, which I'm so grateful for. We have a lot to discuss on this episode, including... Kate Middleton, cancer diagnosis announced earlier today. We'll get into it. The Boeing scandal continues with John Barnett as his lawyers released all the retaliation that he had to face from Boeing. They just put it out there uh, earlier, just uh, yesterday, I believe. Um, put it out there to let everybody know exactly what this poor guy was dealing with. John Barnett is the whistleblower over at Boeing. Very scary, very, very scary uh, topic. Um, we'll talk about that. Uh, this Ruby Frank and Jody Hildebrandt situation that's going on. We haven't really discussed this all that much, but we will get into it. This YouTube uh, situation and abuse and arrests and more body cam footage came out today. So we have to get into that. And uh, Candace Owens has part of ways with the Daily Wire. So we'll discuss that as well. Maybe mix in a couple other things here and there. All together, that is a podcast. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well on this uh, Friday. Uh, it's nice to be here with you. I hope the princess, Kate Middleton, is doing well. I mean, oh my goodness. She put out a video earlier uh, from a park bench where she laid out the details of everything that has been going on with her. And it turns out that she has cancer. And... Um, she detailed everything, saying that she went in for abdominal surgery and they didn't know if there was cancer present or not. And they wouldn't know until the surgery. They do the surgery. She comes out of it. You have cancer. She has to go and start chemotherapy, but they have to wait for her to heal from the original abdominal surgery itself. So there's a lot of components to this. And in the most heartfelt thing ever, she basically said that she was waiting for Easter break to tell the world because her kids, you know, she wanted them to be out of school when they heard. Obviously, if they, you know, if she tells everybody, then they go to school the next day, there's going to be a lot of talking and drama and speculation. But she kind of like had to say it because of everything that's going on with her. And all the wild and crazy theories that are out there circulating around the internet, which is totally understandable. I am still a little uncomfortable. I have to do full disclosure. I have to be honest with you. I'm a little uncomfortable with the fact that she went through all of this and her husband still only visited her once in like 35, 40 days. Um, I'm uncomfortable with that. That still doesn't sit well with me. I know he's the prince. I know he's this, he's that. The kids never go. He never goes with the kids. It feels weird and strange. Maybe that's what they had to come to. Um, but I, I'll tell you, I she had me, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Entirely empathetic, sympathetic. Um, her sitting there on the bench and just, delivering that message straight to camera, which was obviously well-produced, right? The royal family put that all together. She was miked. Um, it was probably boom miked and everything. So it was it was well thought out, um, her telling people, but she had to tell the people, you know, that she was up to the point where she literally had no choice and had to come right out and say it, you know? So uh, obviously she's got her long road to go. She says she's well. She told the kids that she was well. She explained it to the kids already. That's a tough situation. I, I obviously have kids, Cuddles and I. Cuddles will be joining us. 
Cuddles is joining us. Cuddles has joined us. Cuddles is here. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I have kids. I can't imagine how tough it is. Like, it would be tough for any parent to do that, let alone somebody who is so uber in the spotlight. And um, I feel for her. She's got a journey to go through. Obviously, everybody knows somebody who's died from cancer. It's clearly a lot. Um, you know, there was so many weird, bizarre things out there swirling around. And I think everybody's kind of hoping for the best, but you know, it is what it is. It seems like she's going to be doing well. She's got to go through her chemo and they'll keep an eye on it. I guess 42 years old, it's kind of around the time when everything starts breaking down. I could, we're the same age. I'm 42 at 40. Everything started breaking down for me, completely yep. breaking down. Yep. It's not great. Yeah, I was a young, vibrant. I was handsome, good looking, thinner. Okay, let's let's not get <laughs> easy there, okay? Um, so, in the midst of all that, okay, obviously we have all the reaction. Now, I want to start with this. Uh, Blake Lively. Blake Lively puts out a statement today saying that she is mortified for a silly post that she put out around the Photoshop fail. Now I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to make sure I look into the camera so everybody knows that I'm being serious. To joke about this woman, to say anything ill-willed about her is disgusting and in poor taste. And Blake Lively, I'm appalled. I am offended. Um, I believe that you should lose your job. I think that you should have to apologize. I think that you should be banned from social media. I think you should be arrested. Oh, are you reading like a script? I'm reading all the things that people said to me. Oh, uh, those are them. Okay. But I, to, for the, the fact of the matter that somebody could even say something bad about the beloved Kate Middleton, our princess. Can I tell you something? America's princess. Okay. I know she belongs to the royal family in England, but right now she's America's princess. She's the world's princess. And mm -hmm. the fact that somebody can go out and say something bad about her is oh. abhorrent to me. And I'm disgusted and frankly fed up. Yeah, she's a sick person, Blake Lively. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. sick. The audacity. The audacity for her to say this is appalling. She should be, she should, she needs help. Is people what she said needs. you needed help? Yeah, people said a lot of mean things. I didn't read them. I Nor should imagine. you. No, yeah, thanks Nor, a lot, babe. Nor should you. I do appreciate Anthony Lively. I do, that is very funny. Anthony Lively. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I like that one. Um, well, is it, to to be totally honest, here's what annoys me about Blake Lively. Just shut the fuck up. Like nobody needs to hear from you today. Okay, it does. You could be sorry and be also quiet. You know. Yes, but it'll if it if someone says something down the lines at some point and says, look, Blake Lively said this and she couldn't, you know, look how wrong she was. And then they don't say like, they don't find the apology afterward. Blake Lively is wrong. So she's like getting ahead of that. Yeah. Cause people get crazy. No, but honestly though, everybody and their brother said something about the Photoshop. Everybody was worried and concerned about Kate. Now everyone talked about the Photoshop and it was bad. It was, but there are people that said, really, they had these conspiracies with the husband, William and, and Rose. Yeah, I know. That was the wrong part. That was the bad part. She said she wouldn't be back until like after Easter. Why didn't we leave the poor girl alone? Why? We really should. I don't think I ever said she was having an affair, Paul. Let me correct no. the record here. No, no, no. I don't think you did. I don't think I did. I messed around with Frank and you guys for 23 seconds was about all I did. I'm serious. Like I feel like what I did was not what all these people on TikTok did, which is claim all this crazy stuff about affairs and cheating and uh, 
They were coming yeah. out with a, they were getting the announcement on Wednesday was going to be a divorce. Like, come well, on. Yeah. William having a baby with that woman and that. Well, yeah. And Kate having an affair with the guy who got killed. I mean, we talked about it. We brought that stuff up talking about what everybody was talking about. I don't feel bad about that. But there were people out there that were literally perpetuating that. Yeah. I mean, that's horrible. I mean, no, no BS. I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. What I did wasn't false or misleading whatsoever. It was a prank that lasted, right, I remind you, I feel like I need to point this out every time, 23 seconds, okay? Yes. It's a world of difference from somebody that's like, I have a blind item and this is really bad and this is what's coming out. You know, that's a world of difference. That's deceptive and and wrong and misleading you know there's a real big difference between that yeah and and what we were doing you know um oh yeah because all those people that were putting out these things were like i have an inside scoop i have uh someone who knows this so you're you're trying to make it like you're valid like they were trying to say like what they had was like true but on the hush up when it wasn't and she's just trying to you know, tell her kids in the right time and the right process that like, she's, yeah, you know, she's got cancer. Like, come on now. I, I mean, I, I really, I really and truly feel for that. Let me tell you, there's a little, little antidote, little side. Give me 30 seconds. I'm not wasting everybody's time. I promise you. Uh, you know, I love hockey more than anything. And so one of the guys in hockey I love is this guy named Brian Burke. He's an unbelievable individual. He's a general manager. His son uh, was gay, came out, huge gay advocate for hockey, trying to make, you know, being gay in hockey an acceptable thing. It's a wonderful cause. He unfortunately died in a car accident. Uh, so I read this, I read Brian Burke's book uh, because I just think he's a wonderful individual. Always does charity, forces his players to do charity and make sure they're involved in the community. All these, like, just like a great human being that you want to be, right? So I read a book about him. So he, for a small time, was uh, the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? So things are going wishy-washy. The Toronto Maple Leafs are like the New York Yankees. They're like the royal family in Canada. Like, you cannot sneeze without, uh, like, 20 reporters writing about it you know so it's really unfortunate so brian burke gets called in one day and they fire him from being the general manager of the toronto maple leafs he goes i thank you i appreciate you telling me i have to go he leaves the office for the toronto maple leafs and runs right to his child's school and pulls his kid out of school didn't waste time didn't say goodbye to anybody, ran right to school, pulled his, pulled his kid out of school because he was so concerned. He knew that when he found out, immediately everybody else was going to find out. It was going to run through Canada like the biggest rumor thing, and he didn't want his kids to have to face that. So he ran right to their school, pulled them out of school in the middle of the day, like 11 o'clock in the morning, brought the kids home. I Aww. felt so bad for that guy in that moment that he had to do that. Like he just lost his job and he springs into parent mode, right? It's just a horrible situation to be in. I, I felt the same way with this woman today when she's like, now we know why she was waiting for Easter. It was so her kids would be on break. Honestly, how could you not feel for that? Yeah, like they wanted to wait until the kids were out of school to kind of like tell them. It's, it's, oh, you, which, I, which so I totally bad. get and understand. Like, I totally get and understand that, you know? Yeah. Um, Anthony should testify before Congress for spreading misinformation. Uh, let me see here. Mercury says, honestly, it was just a bad joke. Hey, I'm okay with that. Listen. And I mean this, and I, I you're never, there's not going to be an apology for me because I'll never apologize for trying to make somebody laugh. Um, if you thought it was bad, you thought it was bad. I'm sorry you thought it was bad. They don't all work. I don't know if you know this, but all the baseball players that get up to bat do not bat a 1,000. Neither does your old pal Ant. So some jokes are just going to fall bad. Uh, Aussie thinks it's hilarious. And I love both Aussie oh, Annie and Mercury oh, oh. just the same. Like, your opinions mean exactly the same to me, you know? So uh, I don't take anything back. And, um, you know, I appreciate it if you found it funny. And I understand if you didn't. That's okay, you know. 
Yeah. But um, I think I think we all could agree the difference between what I did and what everybody else did was like, all right, take it easy. I honestly don't even think Blake, I don't even know what Blake Lively said. But my point is with Blake Lively, to be totally honest with you and truthful, everybody was suspect of the photo. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that because it never happens in the royal family that way. In fact, if you go back to everything that I said on this podcast, we brought this up and told everybody to calm down and said that they were crazy for having these crazy theories prior to the photo thing. We only brought it back up when the photo thing came out because of just how peculiar it was mm -hmm. and the way it all came out and the way it all went, you know? So, um, but that's that. But, but Blake Lively, bless her heart, to insert yourself into this day, like eh, take it easy, you know. I, I get, I get what you're saying, Cuddles. Like in, in this era of cancellation, you got to get out there and apologize quickly. Um, yeah, but I don't think she should be even be. Listen, if she was one of the people that are like, oh yeah, Prince William definitely knocked up that other girl. Okay, fine, you could apologize for that, uh, but. um not for the Photoshop thing. And I mean, I think everybody assumed that there was something bad or something bizarre or mischievous was going on. And yeah. that's okay. It's okay because that that apology for the Photoshop thing was so bizarre on so many different levels, you know? Um, so anyway, that's the that's the take on that. But you know, I feel for her from this point on because that's a tough. Everybody knows somebody who had to deal with cancer, I know, and and she's a mom, and she's got young kids. It's it. You know, we just keep her in our prayers. Yeah, that's it. Uh, DJ Shenanigan says it was the best when Frank picked up his phone and said no. <laughs> it was. It was entertaining. Um. <laughs> Mercury, you got me, and I was just teasing you all that time because you got me. I wasn't prepared. All is good. No, I appreciate that, and I don't mean to call you out, Mercury, because believe me, there was a lot of people that felt like it wasn't funny, and that's okay. That it's okay. Not everything that comes out of this mouth is funny, or people are going to appreciate. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I believe it. I I, I believe that there really is nothing wrong with that. But the Photoshop thing did put off some, you know, did put up some sirens. And I feel for her, but I will say, and I'll stand by this too. I, cuddles, I'm standing by two things. One, the fact that William didn't visit her enough. I don't know what it says. It just doesn't sit right with me that he only visited her one time throughout this whole process. Um, and two, the way the royal family handled it. You know? Yeah. I I understand. I, listen, hearing it now, it's sensitive. I get it. Totally okay. I thought maybe they could have protected her a little bit. Like if this was the case, you know, maybe they could have protected her on the Photoshop thing instead of letting her take the fall on her own Twitter. You maybe know, maybe we could have all just left it alone when they said, "Hey, she's having abdominal surgery." He'll be back after Easter. Right, exactly. Like you could have doubled. Yeah. They could have doubled Easter down came, on that. And when, you know, we got closer to Easter and they noticed, and then they found out, you know, after they did pathology and there was cancer or whatever, then they could have came out around now or maybe in another week or so and said, hey, she's not coming back. But people m did all this. They, it's not the, I, I don't think that, you know, the palace didn't do anything right. I think it's just the news, the these outlets, all these places. They did this. They created this. And they made it even yeah. worse. Yeah. But I mean, that, but that's part of the territory. These people deal with it all the time. They understand. Yeah. I thought the royal family could have protected her. Like you said, they could have came out and said... Uh, we under we appreciate all the thoughts and the craziness out there, but the fact of the matter is, is she is recovering. Yeah, you know, and that's it. And she you tried to put out a picture, and it, you know, it didn't work out. Here's another picture of her. She's fine. Do you want to you know? know what really, what's really fucked up that came that came out of this? That's fucked up, and it sucks. 
I was re I was going through, you know, she had abdominal surgery. The amount of people from the U S that are like, I had ab abdominal surgery and I went home after like 24, 48 hours. And I was back to work in a week and a half after major. Surgery. And then there were comments from people from around the world that were like, oh, I had abdominal surgery and I was out for like six weeks. It kind of showed you what kind of medical and how things are so different in the U.S. than it mm. is around the world. How we're like, no, you need to get back. You like, you don't get time. Couple days, oh, you yeah. get back. How we, horrible it is here. We're unforgivable. Yeah. Well, oh, we're horrible. the we're the worst country when it comes to childbirth, too. Is it like? Yeah, we, it's it's like, it, you, we don't get we don't get like paid leave women don't get that you get maybe like six weeks you have to save that from work it's unpaid or it's like you, you it's like short-term disability it is horrible in this country how what yeah. we do we don't let people that are sick and she's in the hospital for this long and then she's home recovering and we're like why does she need that long she, she had surgery she had major surgery and here we are saying oh you're being lazy by taking that long like mm. what the hell yeah, that turns out she has cancer. I bet those people feel bad about saying that. Yeah, and I hope should. they fucking feel bad. I, I hope, hope they, they feel bad. Yes. Tell That's them, Cuddles. That's wrong. God damn it. Tell them. We have no fucking empathy anymore. No empathy. None. I yes. agree. I totally agree. Um, bro, 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 bro. Christine writes, it wasn't funny, Ann. I still think you're cross-lined. Yeah, that's okay. And I appreciate it. Um, like I said, I, I stand by it. I, I'm totally okay with it. It was a 23 second joke. It's not, it's not, uh, it should, nobody should take that seriously. Uh, Paul says Americans don't have health care. This is the one mm -hmm. I wanted to get to. Hounded like Diana, they will kill her too. I mean, I hope not. I hope we've all learned from Diana yeah. and I think she'll be okay. I think she'll be just fine. I do want to say though, um, oh, here we go. Paige makes a good point. Royal Family uh, employs dozens of people to protect and follow protocol, and they all failed Kate and put her in the position to answer to the world. That, yeah. that I agree. She said it better than I did. That's exactly my point. You Paige know? is very articulate. She always has, like, when she writes something, it's always, like, perfect. And I feel like they kind of, they left her hanging out to dry a little bit. Anyway, um, not to pull not to pull anybody else in this because this story is based on insiders, which you can choose to believe or really not believe. Uh, but uh, Harry and Meghan insiders say uh, that they were they heard they found out about Kate's cancer diagnosis with the rest of the world, and that it um, what's the quote here? Trust has been broken. Um, they did put out a statement. Now, take that as you will. Let's assume that they didn't yeah. say that. They did put out a statement saying that uh, they're, I forget what they said. It was a thoughts and prayers kind of statement, which I don't love those yeah. things. But you got to say that. You got to say something. Yeah. And Harry and Kate were very, very close. They were always together, That you know. But, I mean, I'm not surprised. They, would keep, they kept this tight-lipped heart cancer. So... I'm not surprised yeah. if no one really knew. And that's okay. That is okay. Well, you, Cuddles, you remember, I went through a cancer scare, and we we were like, uh, it was a horrible couple oh, of days. It was, it was the worst. I, I never want to go through that again. Yeah. And then telling everybody, like I remember saying, I'll make this a long story short, I was like, I'm not going to tell anybody like we didn't, nobody needs to know. That was my first instinct. I was like, I'm not telling a single soul about this. And then you made me feel bad. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to tell just all those close to me. And I told, I had to call people and tell them. And that was horrific. And then it was doubly horrific, although I'll forever be grateful for this, when we found out it was all it was much to do about absolutely nothing. And I felt like such an asshole for having all these conversations with people um, but, yeah. um, yeah, that was like a weird, but telling everybody is totally weird. And again, 
Yeah. Well, you know what? And that's probably another thing because every time you call someone or you talk to someone, they have a doctor to go see. They have someone who had that and has a different outcome. It, it's like the more you add, the more flame to the fire. Yeah. So. Yeah, it stinks. So that's the latest on uh, on Kate Middleton, and I, I don't suppose. I mean, I think th this should call it all off and let uh, hopefully let people. Yeah, leave her get the fuck her alone. Ass. Go away, well, people. Yeah. Get a hobby. But, but again, I believe this, and I will never relent on this. The 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 crown, the royal family, whatever you want to call it, they could have they could have done something to calm this I mean, storm yes. a little bit they could have put a picture out with her and been like she's still recovering she's going to talk to everybody when she feels up to it um you know here's a photo here's an unphotoshopped photo of her everybody take it easy relax yeah you know all these rumors swirling around are completely unfounded something like that delivered the right way would have been would have would have stopped a lot of this craziness um, and they didn't do that. So, and look, Christine Colson's on my side with that one. I agree. Yeah, great. I'm see, we put it all back together. Cuddles, you see that? Yeah, I, I see. Good. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Uh, the Boeing scandal with John Barnett. I I'll never give this up because I still don't think that. And I'm not going to apologize for this ever. Boeing could blow me. Uh, I still don't think that this guy committed suicide and his lawyers don't think so either because they just released the uh, complaint, the lawsuit, if you will, that they filed against Boeing and they hadn't put anything out yet. I mean, we knew a lot of the stuff that went on because it was already publicly disclosed, but um, his two attorneys, Robert Turkowitz, which sounds, sounds like a made up name. I know. And Brian Knowles, who I don't know if any relation to Beyonce, could be a cousin, could be an uncle, could be nobody. I don't know. But Brian Knowles and Robert Turkowitz, they released the full complaint out of total transparency in the wake of him being found with a, uh, an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Uh, obviously, uh, investigation still ongoing there on to what exactly happened. But um, there was a number of bombshell claims in there, obviously, on top of all the other stuff. It got into detail on the fact that this guy, John Barnett, was harassed and uh, there was retaliation against him for some of the things that he was trying to do. Um, in June of 2014, Barnett submitted a complaint to the Corporate Ethics Committee of Boeing. Uh, against a particular manager for violating procedures, ignoring process violations, and pushing Barnett to work in the gray areas and having another manager spy on Barnett. Crazy allegations, right? Mm -hmm. Boeing would obviously deny it, right? Of course. Except the Corporate Ethics Committee of Boeing substantiated his claims. Ooh. And then didn't do anything to the manager that he made the claims against. <sighs> I'm sorry. This is the craziest thing that we have seen in quite a while where he says all this stuff about Boeing and then the FAA investigates and finds out, oh, true. He complains about a manager to the ethics committee of this company and oh, they substantiate it. I don't I mean. I don't understand how anybody could look at this and be like, yeah, he probably killed himself in the truck in the yeah. middle of him, in the middle of him giving statements in, in a deposition for this case where he's probably out going to walk away. This looks like a walk, walk off home run win, you know, and all of a sudden when, when Boeing knows his location, he, he winds up killing himself in a parking lot of a hotel. So I'm, who's yeah? Who's investigating? I hope the same people that are that investigated Epstein's like suicide don't investigate this too. Well, that's what bothers me. It's the it's the local cops down there, and I forget if it's Charlotte or one of the other towns in the Carolinas. Oh yeah, it's it's not Florida, so it should be okay. It's not yeah, Charleston. It's, it's not Charleston. Florida. Okay, yeah, it's not Florida. I think we should be okay. <laughs> 
But I still, I, I, and I'll say this to the end, I still want the FBI, I mean, I still think this is beyond the capabilities of a local police department. I think it's yeah. bigger than that. And I think if it's not taken over by the FBI, they should at least be helping this local police department with all the resources that they may need to get something like this done. Yeah, I don't, That that's sus. Um, the complaint goes on to say more that during meetings, John Barnett's senior manager had on numerous occasions announced to the rest of Barnett's team that he was responsible for the rest of them having to be away from their families and work overtime due to Barnett's insistence on documenting procedure violations and equipment defects. Oh, it's, it's always a manager who blames it on someone else. Can you imagine a manager saying, hey, everybody, we're here because John Barnett wants to document procedure violations and equipment defects? Like, Oh, okay. You know, something that might save lives. Okay, no yeah. problem. Again, this is this would be shitty behavior at a law office or an accounting firm, you know, or a, a, a hardware store, right? Yeah. In which case, most times in those three examples, nobody would be dead as a result in the end. It would still be a dick thing to do. Yeah. This is building airplanes and nothing happened to any of these managers. It's crazy. Oh, God. That manager who did that, he should, you know, Epstein himself. Mm. But can you imagine That's he's bla nice. he's blaming everybody? I mean, I, if I was the team, I could be like, all right, I'm pissed. But, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Maybe we should nail this, you know, <laughs> nail these uh, equipment defects down and figure that out. Yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, if that saves lives, then you know what? I mean, maybe we should. Yeah. Or, God forbid, how about this for an idea? You don't force the team to stay over time and you let them just finish it tomorrow. And what you take a loss a little bit on profits, like oh you can't do that stockholder the stockholders dividend they need all that not in America Listen, lives lives do not matter yep all that matters is the dollar signs so mm -hmm. yep very short sighted thinking. And then yep. everybody will say oh that's crazy you lib you this you that but it, you know listen no uh you can't run a airplane most companies you can't run with profit in mind you really shouldn't be running a, an airplane company with profit in mind you yeah really no no that's why i'm always afraid of flying you shouldn't be running a medical practice with profit in mind you no, know oh god you shouldn't be there's just certain things where you got to be like all right this is more important than if we make a couple more bucks or not you know yeah. I understand the ramifications of a huge company like that not making money and the fact that people could lose their jobs and all that as a result. Okay, fine. But still, people could lose their lives. It's a bit more important. You know? Yeah. It's a, a bit more important if you ask me. So, um, this whole situation, again, we're going to keep our eye on it, even if nobody else is really talking about it. I think it's important. I think there's a lot more to this whole thing. And we'll see when this report comes out from their investigation on what exactly happened to this guy, because you can't tell me that this isn't suspect when they did all these things to him, never did anything, made him feel just open retaliation and making his life miserable. And, you know, it ends the way it ends, and they're not responsible for it at all. Very yeah. suspect. Very, yeah. very suspect. Uh, Ruby Frank and Jody Hildebrandt. Now, this has been something that's been going on for a little while. We haven't really ever discussed it because, I don't know if you know this, Cuddles, I'm sensitive to the child abuse thing. I don't love those kinds of topics. I know. You got, you got soft in your old age having two children. Yeah, always. I, I, always. I can't. I don't like watching movies where children get yeah. hurt. I don't like that. We were talking about that whole Nickelodeon documentary, and that thing is kind of blowing up. I can't watch I know. it. I, I, I can't. I can't watch. I can't have. I. There was a clip. Cuddles knows this. We put we put a booklet together every day. Every day, even when we're not on, a little book gets put together of all the possible topics and things, and I just read it. Like you can ask her. I just read and watch stuff. Mm -hmm. That's it all day long. And I have this clip from 
Joey Lawrence's brother. Oh. Who? Right, he, there's three of them, right? There's three Lawrence brothers. Yes. yes. One of them was talking about this horrible thing that happened to him that uh, he was up for some Marvel movie or something, and the producer, older male, was like, you got to do this for the role, and he didn't do it. Then he got fired. He lost his agents. He's saying all this crazy stuff. So I had – that was in the book one day. We never got to it um, because it's – tough to talk about that kind of shit you know yeah and i don't love talking about it um so the kind of the same thing here with this ruby frank and jody hildebrand thing i i was like eh, it's a story but there was and by the way there's been so many other stories that was easy to leave that one out you know because there's been yeah. so much other stuff going on because again i want to bring you the three most important stories of the day and a little entertainment and humor to make that day a little bit easier, right? That's it. That's the point of the yeah. podcast. So we didn't talk about this, but, and you correct me if I'm wrong here. Cause I, so I had some dribs and drabs of this story early on, but we never went to it, but we're going to it now because there was some new footage that was released from uh, body cam yeah. just to show how um, bad this situation <sighs> was. Which is beyond crazy because, okay, now do you tell me if I have this wrong? Ruby Frank is a YouTuber. Yes, she's a like mom vlog, like YouTuber. She has yeah. six children. She's from Utah. Right. Okay. So vlog, but right. So vlogger on YouTube. Well said. Cause she would like document their life, you know, and put things together, which is another thing that I'm a little on the uncomfortable side with. Cause like our kids, yeah. When we were letting our kids on YouTube, they were watching a lot of that stuff. And I never really liked it. There's only one dude I kind of like who Cece, our daughter, used to watch. Um, he's a skateboarder guy. I don't know his name. I don't know. But he was he was kind of fun and tolerable. I kind of, I enjoyed that. And not that I enjoyed it, but I thought he was the least bad out of all these people. But anyway, a lot of these family vloggers can be a little too much for me i don't really like it it's a lot of fake stuff it's a lot of putting their kids on in, in weird compromising situations yeah they're they're exploiting their children exploiting their children yeah exactly um so all that stuff but this this woman used to put her kids on and everything and from what i understand she used to talk about some of the things that she did for her children like for instance i had i saw a clip again a long time ago that basically said that her son was bad. And so she took his room away from him and he was sleeping. I thought in a basement, I think you told me it was outside in Utah. She was like, I think she took, because the house that they were staying in was when like they saved the children or whatever uh, was Jody Hildebrandt. So it was supposedly her house and they were staying there and like, yeah. And like, she would make him sit, like stay outside, which is crazy. or yeah. Or not feed them before they did their chores. And she documented this, that like she did a video saying like, they're not getting their breakfast until they do their chores. And she had like a journal. Where Which she is, would write things like I, yeah. all these things that they're using against her, she wrote about like they were okay. It's like what? Paige says Ruby yeah. and her husband made millions while on YouTube. Now, which is crazy yep. to me because the clip that I heard came from her, so she was openly talking about some of these things. Yeah, yeah. And nobody raised a red flag on this at all. Well, the, like it, she was like this, I guess. I mean, in Utah, they have, like, Mormons. So they were like this. They have, like, six kids. They do all these things. Like, and that's open and okay and, like, you know, praying. And it, it was craziness. It kind of feels like a cult to me. And Christi the abuse. Ugh. Christina said the oldest son was punished by having to sleep on a beanbag for months, tagging on Mercury. Uh, cause he was teasing his younger sibling and he lost his privilege of having a bed. That's what I heard she that he is. lost his privilege of having yeah, a bed. I, I total. And then she cried. He got like 30 years or something, you know, 
and the she husband cried. did no she did like her and jody hildebrand oh, oh. like they got like 30 years and they were like i love my children and i love that no you don't you do not love your child if you could abuse your child the way that you did so this Jody was just a friend of hers, and they. She was her mentor. She's another crazy motherfucker. Okay, that's what she is. She was like her mentor. She has like a degree. She has some kind of like certification, and they would send, or like psychology or psychiatry, whatever. They would send. From what I saw, I saw a video that said that she a lot of the, um mormons so-called would send her people to like help like in like psychology and all that like what is what does that mean like if they were abused something like that they sent her a lot like they they would settle and give money and help you know help people that were abused kind of like this is just like the Catholic Church. This is crazy. It's, it's, it's getting it's out of hand. It's cold. Yeah, it is. It is. It kind of feels that way. Yeah. And, it's crazy. you know, she had this big, I saw that like they, they released the body cams from the police officers and the house is gorgeous. You would never think that children live there, first of all. And it's like, oh my God. But like, she's like the mentor. Jody was the mentor and Ruby. She's claiming she was like brainwashed and she was just going by what like she had learned and what she had been taught. And then that's how her, what she did to her children or those two. It was, I think it was her youngest Eve and the boy who's 12. So Russell, I think his name is Russell. Okay. Where's the husband in all of this? I don't know. Cause I haven't and heard a peep about him. No, he didn't. But I don't think the children are living with him either now either. They're not living with him right now either. So that's also like, why doesn't he have custody of his own children? Mm. It's all very, very weird. But yeah. you have to feel so, oh my God, it breaks my heart. Yeah. It's, As that's... a mom, it kills me. And I feel like it's double. You it, it doubles in, in how oh, bad it is God. when it's all on camera. Like this kid oh. knows that everybody's out there seeing it. I saw a video. God, it was a. I think it was a female, either EMT or a police officer. She was crying when she saw the child. Mm. She was at, like, like crying. She couldn't. Oh, I can't. That's bad because those EMTs see a lot of bad shit. They do. And to see that EMT, she was so upset because she seeing the bruises and seeing the emaciated child. It, it's it you it's something you never want to see. Oh, devastating. I could oh. I said it to you earlier. Give me 15 minutes in a jail cell with both of them. Mm. just 15 minutes to feel the pain that these children went through raven says the husband was a cuck <sighs> he wasn't innocent but the lady made men's lives hell there's a whole thing out on how the mentor ruined families so this mentor was a real yeah and was this a mormon what church was this because somebody said it, a, a mormon polygamy said uh, man. it yes okay. yes that's what they were saying I don't know where the comment went that I wanted. There I was don't, I, I, like, I don't get it. Like, they made the children believe that jail was, you know, jail was the place they were going to go to, that they were bad. And these kids were so ready to go to jail because they were like, I need to get away from this. When the boy ran away, he was like, can you take me to the police station? Like, he was like, take me to go to jail. Not to get help, but to go to jail because I am bad. <sighs> Jesus. See, like, I, can't, I can't talk about this I, much. It, it's hard. It's hard for us. It, I, we have a son. We have a daughter. It's, it's too much. And listen, let's be totally honest. She, she did this. Be, she said, what, the kids were possessed by demons? Yeah, they the were devil? evil. They were evil. Because okay, she listen, was like, yeah, she said she as, was brainwashed. As people that are parents of two evil children, 
who I'm pretty sure are possessed by the devil for sure. Oh yeah. Still not gonna do that kind of stuff to them. Never. You know? Never. I could I could never definitely not you, pushover. You're the worst. Oh my god. You I've never seen somebody get so mad at the kids for not cleaning up or being on time or listening I, and then go, you could have an ice cream. <laughs> I was just gonna say, you want an extra scoop of ice cream? Okay, my love. I'm like, what are you doing? I love them too much. Their happiness yeah, is what, you're a pushover. What, I mean, what I, make, I could never. This I feel like I'm a pushover too, but you, you. Although I feel like when one of them gets me alone, I'm worse. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm an easier target, especially if we're going out somewhere. Yeah, they're like learning. You, yeah, your. By the way, your son drops this on me, and he knows too. They are. Yeah, you, know, you know, like Tony Soprano he always used to say his friends were animals that could smell weakness. That's yep. our kids. That yeah. is our kids. Oh, yeah. My son, who, because we always like, whenever I take them out or whatever, it's always like daddy daughter day or bro time if I go out with my son, right? Boys day or whatever we call it. Right. So we always kind of do this, that kind of, that kind of stuff. So my son comes into the, actually, I was here, I think it was before the last episode. I'm sitting here getting ready, reading stuff, and he comes and he goes, Dad. Like under his breath like that. I was like, Dad. I go, yeah. He goes, next bro day, you know what I'm thinking? And I look at him and I go, Aww. what? He goes, he goes, I'm thinking Dave and Buster's bro. And he called me bro. He goes, I'm thinking Dave and Buster's bro. <laughs> Which Dave and Buster's is like the video game place where we always drop like $300 every time we walk in there. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, you think so? And like, we only go that we had his birthday party there. Um, when the Rangers and Islanders played, we went there to watch the game as like a special like thing to do. Yeah, with Uncle Frankie and Aunt Ellen. Yeah, well, yeah, Frank came. Uh, we only do things really. It's like we went there for a fundraiser one time. It's not like we on a random Saturday just go there. Yeah. I mean, we will, but you know, or, or maybe we have. I don't know. But it's a rare. You know, we're always going there for some special occasion. Or for something. He's like, it's like Dave and Buster's bro. We're gonna go next next time. Like he's like, next time we're free. <laughs> we're yeah. going to Dave and Buster. And I'm like, yeah, all right. And then there and then he leaves. And then I'm telling you, like, like a heart palpitation. You could feel it. I'm like, I have to take him to Dave and Buster's next time. We're you do. I can't let him down. I got we gotta go. No. You know. He just set you up. He like a like a like a James Bond spy movie where they put the little pin bomb on the person and watch them walk away <laughs> and oh, then yeah. just explode, you know? Oh yeah. He knows what he's doing. You know what he does to me? He'd be like, Oh mom. He's like, Can we sit? He's like, I wanna cuddle with you. I wanna snuggle with you. He's like, Come on. And then we sit down. And then he's got his like little Nintendo, and he's like, "Can I have your phone to play Roblox?" Oh, he's, as he's sitting as he's sitting snuggling yeah. with me, and he knows that like I love that because you know at some point they're not going to want to be with us anymore and be near us. And he's like, "Oh, your heart's all warmed up." He knows, yeah, like, he like he, a salesman. We're under the heated blanket, and he's just like snuggled. He puts his head on my shoulder because we're so like. Mm -hmm. close to each other and he's like oh he's like can i have your phone for roblox can he's i have some money can he's I some alec money? baldwin from glenn gary glenn ross yeah yeah mm -hmm. he's like mom put that coffee down let's know yeah. he's like yeah he's like come on in he's fact like, i've oh, seen my son stop. scream at my my daughter put that juice down uh, yes <laughs> juice yes. is for closers <laughs> <laughs> I walked by their room. He was like, A, always B, B, C, closing. Always be closing. Always be closing on the snack. That's the whole thing that he was doing in his room one day. Uh, yeah. Page, their salesman, it's so true. It is true. They it do. Is, it is really true. Uh, Brian says, Aunt and Cuddles, can you guys adopt a 61 year old? May, we'll talk about it. We have been thinking about getting a dog. I assume a 61 year old yeah. would be pretty similar. Oh, yeah. Are you are you house trained, Brian? Uh, that's what I need to know. 
because yeah. uh, I could deal with the shedding, but I can't deal with peeing on the floor in the house. That no, we, we, we can't we do that. that. No, we still no. Brian says he's house trained. All right, we'll talk. Oh, about okay. It. We'll talk about it. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Neil, he's a lady killer in the making. He yeah. is. He is because he has a dimple in one cheek, and. Every teacher he has ever had has always commented about that one dimple. When he smiles, they get that one dimple. And it's like, oh, you can't help but love it. He told me, I have to to whisper this. He told me yesterday for the first time that he has a crush on a girl in his class. And And he goes, I don't, he goes, but dad, he goes, I keep that a secret. I don't tell anybody that. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I appreciate it. And then, yeah, that's, you know what I didn't realize? I, I don't know if that was part of that. This all might be part of the Dave and Buster setup, though. He's like, let me, let me let this idiot on a secret. Let me act like he's like my friend. And oh, he played you. That he's, <laughs> that he can, that he's oh holding on to a big, God. I'm just coming yeah. to this realization right now as we're talking about this. I'm like, hold this on. Is so this might be you. a setup. This might be a setup. He's, he, he, fucking set you up let me tell him something and then then talk that's what he does he gets you all nice and then he's like oh i have a girlfriend i have a plan i have this i have that hey let's yeah. go to dave and busters and you're like okay he, you're like you're like okay let's go he might be he might be playing he did everything shy of keep it between us bro that's he yeah. did, he, he didn't go there but he could have oh. He absolutely could have. Everybody thinks he played me. I, I, oh shit. You are the weakest link. Paige goes, you just have to feed him. Here's the funniest part about our kid. Most rigid needs three meals a day. Needs it. Oh my God. We'll have breakfast and like sometimes like here's, this is an Italian thing, especially on a Sunday. You have breakfast and maybe it's a little later than usual, right? Later than when they go to school, like 10 you know, you get a get up late, you get a late, late breakfast going on a Sunday. And then as is an Italian thing, like two o'clock, three o'clock. Yeah. You, you know, because you're not going to eat at noon because you just had a late breakfast. So two, three o'clock, you have a huge dinner, macaroni, meatballs, chicken yeah. cutlets, all this stuff. We'll have this. We'll watch him eat pasta, watch him eat chicken, like stuff himself to the gills. And then it'd be like 6, 6.30, and we'll be like, you know, you guys got to go to bed soon. And he'll look at us and be like, without dinner? Without, yeah. He's You're going to send me rigid. to bed without dinner? And we're like, you just ate a, a house. And then we, we, there was one time where we go, are you hungry? And he's like, no, but I need to have dinner. Yeah. <laughs> But As if something was going to happen to him without dinner, if he didn't have yeah, a dinner. He thinks he's going to starve. The child that eats and eats and eats and eats and eats, but is eight years old, and I put a size eight pants on him, and they, like, fall down because he's so skinny. Yeah, he's going to starve. I'm starving. I, you have to feed me. I'm starving. Yeah. You, just, you just ate. The best is when... Out. When they go through a normal day, and by the way, a normal day is an insane day. Like, I don't even know. Like, they get, let me give everybody the thing. And Cuddles, you wait till I'm done. No interruption. Okay, go ahead. Cuddles will make breakfast. They'll eat a breakfast, which is like a waffle or two waffles or a bowl of cereal or eggs and toast and avocado slices. My wife is like a fucking vegan cafe, for Christ's sake. Uh, so they'll have a breakfast. And then sometimes we'll get a report that they had the breakfast in school because school provides a breakfast, you know, uh, which I get now because there's some assholes out there mistreating their kids. Right. So, OK, now there's a school breakfast. They'll get that sometimes, too. Then they get lunch. And then on occasion, after we have fed them the lunch from home. They'll go and buy lunch again. <laughs> From the fucking cafeteria. We've gotten that report. Then there's snack time, which there's two in a day. I never had two snack times when I was coming up. Not even one. It was one. And there's two snack times. Then they come home and they got to have a a home snack. Right? And then there's a dinner. Yep. And so 
All of that will occur in a day. Maybe not all in the same day, all of it. But but a, a lot of the times, a lot of those things are happening. And then you go like this. All right, 10 minutes, we're going to bed. I'm hungry. What? Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah, no. No, you're not. You're just trying. It is a natural instinct in a child to try and stay up an extra five minutes, to squeeze an extra 10 minutes out of the day. Yeah. I don't know why that is, but it is like a instinct they think they're gonna miss something i wish i could go to goddamn sleep i wish i could go to sleep maybe and they fight it okay so can i talk now can yeah yeah yeah, okay first of all our school doesn't provide it we still have to fucking pay for it breakfast okay oh but yeah yeah but they but it's there they they have the opportunity to buy it it is it is there and a lot of times it's there and this is the reasoning i was given one yes in case a child didn't have breakfast at home and two there are children that go to daycare in the morning and they get fed super early in the morning and then they can't make it to like lunchtime. Oh, okay. All right. That makes so sense. So they, they, a lot of times it's just ki- most of the time, I will tell you it is 80% of the time. It is just because a kid wants to buy it and it's shit food that they probably are not getting at home. It is not people that go to daycare. It is not people that don't have food at home. There are some, but mostly it is just like our freaking daughter who eats breakfast at home. But then other people are buying breakfast, so she has to do it. Mm, or she'll she'll go, I'm hungry, and then eat her oh. lunch during snack time. Oh, my God. Oh after my God. her snack, and then go uh, and buy a lunch. Oh, my God. Our daughter, I give her a full lunch. And when I mean a full lunch, she's got either chicken nuggets, she's got peanut butter and jelly sandwich, a Nutella sandwich, chicken nuggets, and then she has snacks for two snack times and lunch and i mean like two to three snacks per each like so she's got like nine snacks in there like our food bill is crazy this kid will be like oh i ate everything (laughs) and i bought a second lunch what do you mean you i have to tell what do you mean you bought a second lunch i give you more food than like a quarterback is or like a football player is eating what are you doing (laughs) What is going on here? You're and I'm more giving than her... the Jets offensive line. I, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, what what is going on? And I'm giving her like I'm giving her a cheese stick, a yogurt, carrots, and like some ranch dip or something. I am giving her like every color of the goddamn rainbow to eat. And this kid's like, oh, I bought like freaking a uh, walking taco. They call it a walking taco. Do you know what it smells like? Horse meat. And this is what my kid eats. But when yeah. I cook a dinner, she's like, oh, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> oh, you don't know if you want that, but you'll eat horse meat in school? Okay. Yeah, or, or, or won't no eat the end of the chicken because it's the oh, crust. Oh, fuck. Or won't eat a crust. That's, won't eat the crust <laughs> of like a bread. Won't eat the crust or the, the outer part of a waffle because that's the crust. You want to laugh? No cross. Oh my god, gets me so crazy. You want to laugh? Just tonight, I'm putting them to bed, and I'm like fluffing her pillow up, right, as she's Uh getting her pajamas on. There's three cheese. (laughs) I know. There's three cheese sticks underneath their pillow. Oh my god! I go. What is this from? (laughs) I go. She's like, I don't know. I go. No. If you just brought it up here like an hour ago, we could put this back in the fridge, and it'll be fine. If this is from thursday tuesday then we're in trouble i gotta you know what she said she said it because she had a play date today with two friends and one of the friends is actually our son's crush oh you don't have to go tell him all this this is gonna be there forever when he's 50 he's gonna go back and watch it's fine they they dated they were i was in the kitchen the most of the time that they were here that's that's not from today that kid sneaking food. All right, then that's would, that that she is sneaking fucking fruit. The that yogurt is not good. It was too warm. That's oh, the yogurt! No, no, yeah, the yogurt. Yeah, you no. can't, the yeah. cheese sticks too. She hoards. She's a hoarder. Well, how many times do I sit down on the couch at the end of a day and uh, I, I you hear? I'm like, what? And I lift yeah. up the pillow. You're like you know, how you put the pillow on the arm. Lift up the hard. pillow, and there's yogurt, cheese stick, everything. Oh, it's all, God. Because she eats it and hides the evidence. 
Oh my god. And it's I don't crazy. care. Like, if you want a cheese stick, okay, fine. I'll give you a cheese. Sit at the goddamn table. Sit at oh, the no. table. Yeah. They want to stay up and they can't eat at a table. Eating at a yeah. table is like yeah. a foreign thing to them. I don't get it. I don't know why. We've always eaten at the freaking table. Mm. Uh, Paige says, uh, wait, you didn't like your daughter having a boy crushing on her, but your son has a crush and you re reach into your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> um, well to be fair and although that may appear to be sexist also which i'm actually okay with that i'm gonna be sexist when it comes to protecting my daughter always um she's a bit more of the aggressive one than he is him yeah. saying that was like a relief of like oh he has feelings <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yes. If, I, we had to know that he had feelings. Yeah, That's we didn't know he had feelings. We thought he was just built for video games and television. No, I had no connections with people. <laughs> yeah. So that was a relief. <laughs> Her, on the other hand, she comes home the other day and goes, Dad, uh, so and so and so and so got married today. I oh, go, the what? boy. Oh, yeah. That was, yeah. That was not good. And then I, I'm like, oh, that, you know, like I'm thinking, oh, you know, whatever. This is ridiculous. I'm about to tell her no. And then she goes, yeah. Under the table. And I went, all right, hold oh. on. I'm like, no, start at the beginning. I'm like, what What happened under the table? And they exchanged rings. And I know she was telling the truth because the little boy was outside from uh, the school. And he's like, oh, I dropped my ring. Oh, no. Oh, God. Now, there. Yep. Now, how old is our daughter? Our daughter is six years old. <sighs> Thank God. I okay. Can't. You don't even know what kids age. I mean, these are six-year-olds we're talking about before anybody's like, oh, you know, these are six-year-olds. And then she tells me, she goes, yeah. And then they kissed each other on the hand, which really set me through the roof because I know that's a lie. <laughs> that is, no, I, that's not, that's probably true too. No, no, no. I know it's a lie. I mean, I think these two kids kissed each other on the lips, not on the hand. Oh, uh, no, I don't think they would have gotten that far. There I are, don't you know. know, people in the lunchroom watching the kids. Because she started to sense my anger when when under the table came up and I started oh. it and I straightened up and I was asking questions. She sensed that. And then when she said the kissing thing, she pulled it back to the hand. And I'm like, eh. and then I told her, I go, listen, you don't kiss anybody's hand, lips, you know, nothing. Nobody. Oh, oh, Mr. Perfect over here. She How is you the tell aggressor. me? No, no, no. You remember when you tell me, oh, the kids get crazy because you get crazy and you have to stay calm and you have to do all this. And you and who didn't get calm? Who wasn't calm here? Oh, oh, look at this. That's a <laughs> Oh, look at this one. Cuddles is mad at me because we were at somewhere and I go, she goes, tell the kids that we're going to leave because they're not going to want to leave. You know, she was anticipating them being jerks, which they can be, especially they to her. They are. And, and they are. They are to you. Um, and uh, I go, hey, guys, we're going to leave in like five minutes. And they're like, okay. And then she goes, I can't believe they're listening to you. You got a little mad at me. And I said, well, I, I delivered it calmly and I gave him a little warning that it was coming. Yeah. And you're Which, like, oh, you're always, you're always like getting crazy. Oh, we got to leave. Oh, and you get crazy. And then you, they get crazy. Remember? But, Remember yes. when you were judging me? I did. And I'll, I'm uh, happy that we're talking about this here publicly in front of everybody. Cause I can mm -hmm. apologize to you. Cause I, I actually have been thinking of this this entire week since it happened mm -hmm. and uh i was a jerk i was uh, it was unfair to you because it's not your fault but didn't i say it was not your fault actually now that i'm apologizing no you did say you said because i get crazy and then i start getting agitated and i get upset and i start yelling that we have to go and they don't listen to me they listen to you but more said, because they're more afraid of you but they're i not said afraid it's not of me uh, right, but I said it's Even not your it fault though. Because I'm the psycho one in this whole com this whole family. I'm the crazy one. They're I know not. you. You discipline them actually more than I do. I don't know if telling them what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> is a way of discipline. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, but here's the, no, I shouldn't even say just like, you'll take stuff away or they know they won't get the snack or the, this or the, that from you. Whereas with me, I always threaten to send them up to their room and they don't like that. Yeah. But I threatened, I'm like, do I have to fucking text your father? 
Do I have to call? Or yeah, I just well, pick, I just pick up my phone. No, but and they're I'm like, apologi- oh, no, no, don't text daddy. Don't text daddy. What I'm apologizing for, though, is it's unfair to to throw that out there because A, I'm you, with them 99% you're with them more, of the time. A lot more. And B... You know, there there's always going to take they're always going to take advantage of the person that they're with more. Yes, exactly. So I am really appreciating you. Um, I am appreciating that. I am appreciating you actually saying that I am the superior one. I'm thank you. No, I mean I think I've always said that. Though (laughs) I've always admitted to that. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Mercury says 99% of the time this podcast is on, I'm eating. This is the only Ooh, time I'm not eating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's a complete, it's a little bit of the opposite, but I get it. Um, Christine says, I always get hungry. Uh, they are always talking about food. Did we talk about food? Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh, somebody made a comment before. Wait, see, I'm never going to find it now about the vegan cafe bit. Cuddles will, when she's making uh, food like dinner, she will make something for each child plus what she's making for us because she feels bad, which, and to the point, I forget whoever said that. I'm sorry. I can't find the comment now. It's too far. There's too many comments have gone by. Um, We didn't have that when we were kids, whatever no. was made that whether it was mom in the kitchen or I don't know, for me, my dad was always on the grill. My dad wasn't much for the kitchen, but he would grill stuff, whatever they were making. That's what we were eating. That is it. Yeah. And you're way too soft on them with that. I am. But if they do, like if we do tacos, um, both will eat them. It's just they like them their own way. So I have to do them different ways for everyone. Yeah. Well, that's different from me making a taco different. But there's a lot of times where we'll be just having chicken or or yeah. whatever. And and then they'll be like, eh, I don't want to and next thing I know, he's got a cheeseburger. She's got <laughs> soup, which is her favorite thing, spaghetti soup. And then we're having a completely different thing. And I'm like, this is crazy. We can't keep doing it. I know. This. I know. I just want them to eat. That's it. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Oh, <laughs> then, I don't want to talk too much about this, but Cuddles, you know, does a lot of stuff with children outside of our own children, right? Yeah. So one of the kids didn't have lunch or spilled a lunch or whatever the fuck it was. It doesn't matter. Oh, uh, yeah. One of the stories, this, my wife is emptying out her bag, which is always filled with snacks, by the way. Always be friends <laughs> with a mom because they always have snacks. Yeah. Uh, hashtag Michael Scott. Um but it's the truth. And there's my wife. And she's telling me the story that she's like giving this girl all these. Th- and I'm like, there's a cafeteria. Go get her pack of chips. And then she goes yeah. in the most sweet. And it's when she goes, oh, I just wanted to make sure she got fed. I'm like, hey, we're in America. She's in the, an affluent public. Like th- there's there's a whole room. Yeah. With, with hundreds of pounds of food. And you're like, I just wanted to make sure she was fed. Well, <laughs> like, yeah, she's yes. going to be fed. No. First of all, he. I okay, sorry. I always have like the staples, which is fruit snacks. Everyone loves goddamn fruit snacks, and like pirates booty. All kids love pirates booty. I'm sorry, they're, they're the best. Yeah. And he took both of them. <laughs> so obviously, he did, got did you put life. both hands out and be like, "Which one do you want?" And he just grabbed both. And was like, "Thanks." No, I was like, "Do you want fruit snacks?" And he's like, "Yeah." So I gave him. I'm like, "Do you want pirates booty?" I'm like, do you eat pirates booty? After I asked if he had allergies, because I had to make sure he had allergies. And his teacher was like, he's in class with our daughter, okay? I've known him for like three years. That's another thing. Um, um, Mercury said, my mom made one meal. Oh, this is funny. I used to give my dad the eye so he can finish my plate. Otherwise, my mom would have made me <laughs> wear the plate as a <laughs> Oh, my God, never. Our kids, I can't even tell you how much food they leave. They leave a lot, which is which. By the way, I think I've lost four pounds just from not eating off of their plate. Yeah, which yeah. I used to love to do when they left at night. There would be times where you would be like, "Don't waste food, and you need to eat." And in my mind, I'm going, "Listen to your," um, or out loud, I'm saying, "Listen to your mother." And in my mind, I'm going, "Well, I, can't, I hope they leave at least three nuggets." Yeah, I hope the pizza bagels. And <sighs> let let's be honest, I'm not. 
sometimes if I'm making us a meal that I know they're not going to eat, my kids aren't getting no like gourmet meal. Michael, like our son is getting pizza bagels. Our daughter is getting like ramen because that's like her favorite thing. But I will add like wontons to them. Yeah, that's but a new like, thing. She just, makes spaghetti soup, and then all of a sudden, there's wontons going into. I'm like, what is happening here? Yeah, like, she, but but I will be okay with that. Like, that's their things. They're not getting no like three course meal. Like, you know, frozen chicken nuggets, not the dino ones. Because I don't. No, make those. but sometimes you fire off a, a gourmet burger for that kid of yours, and and uh, you know, it's it's a bit I know. much. I know, but now our daughter's eating cheeseburgers too. So I'm happy about that. At least then I can kind of do that together. Uh, Raven, my daughter doesn't eat meat and she's fussy uh, as fuck. And sometimes I got to do two meals just so she eats. We went through that time period where it's like, I don't know what they're going to do. Let's make them both two things. And hopefully. yeah, but they grow out of that a little bit. Yeah. And they- ours eat meat. Ours will have steak with us. They'll eat chicken. You yeah. know, they don't like pork. They won't eat like pork. Yeah. Well, you know what's amazing? Our son doesn't okay like rice. That. Didn't like oh. rice as a, a youngin. And he doesn't like mashed potatoes. The texture. Neither. Yes, so crazy. Neither. And I know how to cook. I'm not saying I do not make lumpy mashed potatoes. Mine are great butter, heavy cream. Like oh, neither of our children will eat mashed potatoes. They do not like the texture yeah. of mashed potatoes. It's crazy. And I, from babies till now. Uh, Brenda, it's just a natural thing to see our children eat. They just have to eat. It's true. There yeah. are times in my life often when those kids are eating and I just feel this calmness come over me. It's like the same feeling when they go to bed at night. I will walk out of the, I'll close that light, walk out of that room and think to myself, we did it. We got another day. They're fine. Oh, What's this week shit? Yeah, what is that? It, you mean D? <laughs> Cuddles did it. No, Cuddles did it. There is a weird. I don't yeah, know. No, I get that. I don't know if I've just felt that way in the last two years, you know, because of what happened, or if that's just a. I don't know. I'm not quite entirely sure. But when they get in that bed, I just feel like accomplished. Same yeah. thing when they eat. When they eat, I feel a con- What's weird is, and I wonder, uh, please tell me in the chat if, you, if you're like this too. I have a strange sense of accomplishment when we go out to eat. Like even from McDonald's to a pizzeria to, you know, a really classy, wonderful dinner like at TGI Fridays. <laughs> no matter what it is. When they're eating, there is this moment, and I I would love to know if this is a dad thing, a mom thing, a parent thing, or nothing. There's that moment where I'm like, I did this. Look how happy they are. Look at how they're being fed. They're being taken care. There's like this bizarre sense of accomplishment. Do you ever feel that way? I do. I really, really do. And I have to say, we can go out and our i at least i think our children are very well behaved they are not when we go out to eat like sometimes you're gonna be like okay that's you know take it easy but for the most part our children are very well behaved when we go out to restaurants yeah that's true well, they i don't really, know can't be that way when they're in this house i don't know no, what no in the ha- when they are in the house it is like a free-for-all yeah i've just given up on trying to like as long as they're not hurting each other, which happens a lot because they are constantly fighting now, um, I I just don't. As long as they're playing, I don't care what you do. As long as you're alive, there's no one bleeding, there's no one like crying. Okay, right. Go ahead. Right. That's it. Like there was no hospital, there was no doctor. No, no, we nothing. Did it. We made we, it through. We, yeah, they went to bed. They were like good night. They weren't hating each other. They really do love each other. Yeah, you know. Every time they fight, figure it out. Come to a common ground. Do this. Let's go, kids. Brenda says we're good parents. All right, Paige says wait till they go to a friend's house and they say so and so's mom makes the best mac and cheese, or something that you make great for years. It'll piss you off even when you think it won't. Yeah, that would. Yeah, we don't have a lot of Italian. A lot of the people that I'm friends with aren't really Italian, so I'm not really worried about that. Yeah. But what the one thing that I will say tonight. 
um, our two little friends that were over, our, one of them said to our daughter, she was like, you really have like the best mom. No, that's very I sweet. was like, oh my God. That was because I was giving them ice cream sundaes with rainbow sprinkles. Oh, yeah. That was what Push did it. Over. Push the McDonald's. Over. I got the McDonald's and yeah. then the ice cream. Get That's some what McDonald's. did it. Wait, forget. How about schedule as a play date this week in a few days? My parents are coming up. We've got ants coming. Like at the, at the whole entire, there's going to be between the family for Easter time, there's going to be a total of 476 people coming through my house. All right? We have so much to get ready for next week and Cuddle schedules a play date on a front. And, and by the way, we're so busy tomorrow. We're so busy Sunday. Like we, there's not yeah. a free moment until I we know. get the family coming in and she's like, let's have a play. Yeah. Wait, let's double the amount of kids we have in our home. I don't care. I, I oh do, my god, I you're crazy! Care. I was against I this. Do you're against everything? You True. are a Debbie. That's a good Downer. point. That's a good point. I do not care. I will get it done as I always do, and make my children happy. That's it. Mm -hmm. I, I do uh, not. Going back to what Paige said, I feel like a dick too because I can distinctly remember going over my friend's house. And his mom just rustling up a fresh batch of scratch homemade chocolate chip cookies. And I remember going home going, you know, they're they're rocking uh, fresh cookies. Like at 3.30 in the afternoon, mom. Like what, you know. And then I remember going to my friend. I take a bite and I go, oh my God, this is delicious. He's like, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm like, how often does your mom do this? And he's like, oh, like every day. What? And I go, okay. like, every day? He goes, yeah. A lot of the times, chocolate chip cookies are after-school snack. By the way, another thing that didn't exist in the late 80s, early 90s, at my household at least, after-school snacks. I never ate when I got home from school. Oh, I, a lot of people do. I We didn't. Yeah. I don't, I don't know where that came from. This is like a thing now, all of a sudden. Did you, when when you were growing up? No. Yeah, there was no snack. Well, you, I don't know about that because in my household, I was lucky to be alive as being one of six children. By the time I came around, my parents didn't give a shit anymore. There was food. There was always food, but it, whatever. That's why I'm overweight because growing up throughout my life, I was able to eat anything at any time, any shit, which is why we really don't want to do that with all kids. But no, I, I noticed like other houses didn't have that. When I went by my friend's house, they didn't have those things. Yeah. And but now like people do have that. Kids come home and they're like starving. Like what you didn't eat lunch? Like Yeah. It was always you're gonna spoil your dinner. You're not eating now. Yeah. But you know what? I want our house to be like the house where the kids can come and play and hang out. Like that is always what I've wanted. So I do not care. Like you we were gonna have a lot of people here all the time. So fucking get used to it. I, I want wish, our house to be that house. I wish I did we would have talked about that. this before we got married. I didn't realize. It doesn't things matter. Were so far then apart. go yeah. then you know what? Stay at work late. <laughs> This okay. is a, this is a really this is a troubling. You know they always say, "Oh, make sure you marry somebody you can get along with, same religion, same background, all that jazz." Make sure you talk about whether or not you want to be the party. I would rather not. I no, I would rather <laughs> them be here than somewhere else. Oh well, the, I That's feel that way when it comes. Me. I feel that way when it comes time for the drinky drinky. When when the drinky oh. starts to become a problem, I would like them to be here because I will make sure. Mm -hmm. None of that shit happens under my roof because well, I will yes. be sitting in the middle of all of them. I do not know. I don't think we have to worry about that with our son, but with our daughter, yeah, we have to worry. Our son, can you tell tell everyone what he said about riding the bicycle when we went for the bike ride on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> do you remember he was riding the we as a family? We're walking in the street because there's no sidewalks. Um, and our two children are riding their bicycles. And our son is very, he's very cautious. And he was in the street. And we're right there. 
and he says safe he's like but yeah he's like but safety is very important <laughs> and he's going on about safety and i'm like he's panicking when a car is coming and we live in like a gated area and this child is like oh my god oh my and i'm like i'm right here and he's like yes but safety is very important and i'm like oh you, this is this is too much i'm like let, let, let free like be free no, don't you, worry <laughs> be free. no because you missed the you're missing an important part of the story what? we started to go on a slight incline i don't even oh. want to use the term <laughs> uphill because it's unfair <laughs> It, it was like a an anthill. It's like a street. It's not. I don't live in a hilly area, but it's a street, so it goes on a slight incline and then it goes slightly down in the other part of the street, right? Oh yeah. So he's he's like, oh, this is getting hard. So my wife and I start walking in front of him because we're walking behind the two children riding bikes. We move up in front of him to kind of be like, come on, you're going to be left behind. And that's when he was like, you know, this isn't safe. Safety is important. <laughs> Like we're gonna leave him, and he's just oh gonna get swallowed god. up by a car. Oh my god! Oh my god! It was so fun. That's right. We were cackling when he first. We said. could not. This proves. This is proving that he does not spend enough time outside getting uh, hurt. Yeah, because he never wants to ride a bike. But yet, our daughter, she'll come up here every day at like three o'clock, four o'clock. You know, after snack time. Yeah. <laughs> they'd be like, Dad, come on, let's go ride the bike. And she loves to go to the super far. Like, she loves yeah. riding she a bike. She doesn't have fear. And him, when we, this same day, he was screaming because we were leaving the house. Like, he did not want to leave the house. He wanted to watch TV all day. And this was after we gave him, like, a full TV day on, on the day before. Yeah. Because we had nothing to do and he had like a really busy week. So we were like, we're going to chill. We're going to watch movies. You could play video games. Like we're just going to, we'll play board games. Like we just hung out and chilled. Yeah. He's a homebody. He likes being like in the house. He loves it. Where she, like, we have to keep our daughter occupied 24 seven. If she's home on the weekends, like we have to keep her doing stuff or she's like, do you want to play? Sorry, do you want to do makeup? Do you want to do toenails? Can you rub my back? Can you stare at me for like five hours? <laughs> Whereas Mike, like our son, you don't have to do anything. No, he's like, leave me alone. I got to get to the next yeah. level on this Mario yeah. Kart here. Yeah. Uh, now, Margo Thatcher says, oh, my God, why do people worry about food so much? I have been to McDonald's, I would say, twice in my life. This is why too many children are fat. Honestly, your children sound awful. Oh, yeah. shit. Take that, Cuddles. <laughs> Suck it from Margo. Mar um, Margo, do you have children? Wait, to which to which Brian says, Margo, don't sugarcoat it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what anyone else says. Let me tell you something. That's hilarious. Our son is the, so sweet. He does not have a mean bone in his body. And yeah. our daughter got an award at school for kindness. So I'm doing something right. So suck on that. Okay? That's true. Suck on that, Margo. We got a yeah. kindness award from the library. Bitch. No, not from the librarian. And she oh. sees everyone, every single child in that school. And out of every single child in that school, our daughter was picked. So for the kindness that she is. <laughs> So I did something right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got to get that fucking award. I'm going to fucking post it. We'll put it right Show behind. It. We'll get it over here on a plaque like a doctor. Like, like, a, like right. it's a doctorate. Yeah. I, I, there's certain things I care about. There's certain things I don't care about. But being kind to others is very important to me. And both of our children have that. And they both have empathy for other children, too. So we're doing something right, babe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mercury says, I like staying home, not a la Frankie, but I like to stay <laughs> Oh, my God. That guy That's stays true. home. That guy stays home. There are times that you could ask Cuddles this. This is a God's honest truth where I it'll be like a Thursday or a Saturday, like two o'clock. And I will turn to Cuddles and I'll go. I wonder what that Frank is doing right now. I, I, I don't know what he's doing. He must be doing something. I can't imagine what it is. I have no he's, idea. He's taking a nap. I have no idea. We'll do. We'll go Monday, and then on Wednesday, I'll go. What's going on? How you doing? Yeah, good. What's going? What's happening with you? Man, eh, nothing. <laughs> what have you been up to? Yeah, you know, nothing. You know, hanging around. And I go, oh, okay, you know. And then I realize, oh wait, 
14 years have passed and Frank has literally not told me a thing he's done. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 14 years since the last time he went you wouldn't believe what happened and then told me something and it, that was the last time now it's just yeah, you know I go, same yeah. old stuff nothing new yeah i'm too stupid and too bar too worried about talking about myself to even realize he hasn't said anything to me yeah <laughs> oh right. shit um let me see was there another good comment a lot of comments going on. That's really it. I'm actually kind of proud that this segment on these pieces of shit turned into a big bitch fest from you and I. A little therapy it's session right. on our children. I it's think every, right. I think everybody enjoyed it for the most part. I think they did. And listen, we bitch and moan and and that's I think just being a parent, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I fucking love my kids. I do. Yeah. Do I need a vacation sometimes from them? Uh, yeah, but I wouldn't change anything for the world. That's right. I'm with you. Brian goes, whatever Frankie C is doing, he's doing it in a quiet house. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> oh. I just think about that all, all the time. It's all do, the time. Do you think, like, do you think their house is like super quiet? Like, is there, like, you know, when like our kids are up, the TV has to be on because they need like that, that sound in the back. Like you do, like when we need to go to sleep, you have to have like the your iPad yeah. onto you here. I wonder if they have that or is it like super quiet? Because I hate super quiet. That's it's like super freaking. quiet except for the spirits in their home. And oh, the, yeah. And That's... the tub noise. Do you remember the tub noise? Oh, I would sell that house. I would not be able to live there. Yeah, he's got a lot of ghosts in there. He's got a ghost yeah. in his tub and a ghost in his basement. Yeah, no. Someone Fucking right in that house. 13 and blood and shit like that. The whole yeah. making noises. Wind noises. Not like dripping noises but like whoosh, scary ghost weird wind noises God. all things a nightmare i just still don't know i don't know and then oh i'll go like this i'll admit there was a couple of times there was one time oh God, i don't know if it was the uh, hero soap or the uh uh our good pals over at uh, the coffee company there where i had to send them something and so I text Frank, I go, I need this thing from you, you know, for the, for the, the endorsement. No answer. I'm like, I got, I'm like, I got to send this out. Like they're wait, they're waiting, you know, but I'm texting. Text. Finally, I text Aaron because I need an answer. And she goes, oh, he's sleeping. He's taking a nap. And I just remember looking at you, Cuddles going, what's he so tired from? <laughs> <laughs> what is he taking a nap? Yeah. What, what's 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 going on that he's like at three o'clock on a Saturday? Like, is that what people oh, that don't have kids do? I gotta get some shut eye. Oh yeah, they 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 count the, all the money they have from not spending it on their yeah. children. This is what Frank. <laughs> this is, I know what he's doing. The son of a bitch. He's just counting money that he has because some kid didn't suck it out of him, or yeah. he's looking at his clean, pristine walls, wondering. Oh. Why aren't why aren't there big chunks missing like at all of my friend's house? Wow, it's... that sounds nice. I wonder what that's like. I was looking at our wall. No bullshit. Which one? A couple of them. Yeah, a couple oh, of okay. them. Okay. And I go, I would have I would love to know if I collected all those little tiny wall pieces, every one of them that they've kicked and carved out of our wall. Yeah. How much that would weigh. How much oh. would you think that would weigh? More than what they weigh. <sighs> you think not? I honestly think I I was thinking about this. I go maybe like a pound and a half. No, more than there's a lot missing. A lot, but we're talking about these little, you know, scrapes and chunks. I mean, that you know, that's still. But you know what? Each and every one has like a story. Like our son in the walker. You remember when he used to go in the walker and like speed down the hallway like a demon? Go and he used to fly, and then he'd hit the wall, and there's a piece. <laughs> mm -hmm. Remember, or when he got that automatic like four wheeler, the Mickey mm -hmm. Mouse four wheeler oh, his first birthday, bad, yeah. and that one, and he used to hit a corner. There was that one. Uh, there, there's like little ones all over, and they all have a story. They do. They do. Uh, oh, your page is gonna make me cry. 
Uh, I have a football and a basketball out in my living room. I miss the kids, noise, and toys. It flew by, but every time they visit, my son will grab the ball and toss it as he talks to me. <gasps> That's very sweet. Oh, God. I could see that, too. I could see... By the time they're both out of the house, I could see us being complete, completely full, like just leaving their shit everywhere. Yeah, but I don't know if I'll, I don't, well, our daughter will definitely leave us. Our our yeah. son, I don't, I don't know, because he keeps saying that he wants to live with us and or he wants to live next door. He might have a little bit of trouble leaving us. Okay. And he's in, he's in no condition right now for me to give him to another female. I can't do that to them. I have a lot no, of work. No, you can't. You gotta I have protect. a lot of work. I would never do that to another female. I you got to protect your crew. Yeah, you're right or yeah. die with, with, uh, with. I am. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know. And like, it's hard to get rid of their stuff as they get older. It is. Mm. It's, it's getting a lot harder. And, you know, they're tests and their projects and the things it, it is it's a lot harder to get rid of than i thought it would be i'm glad this has turned into a, a real parent share session i know yeah. but you know what i mean brenda everyone... says i cherish every minute with my 25 year old now good girl oh that's right i hear stuff like that and i go how'd you do it 25 yeah. how'd you get them there the only thing that scares me is when we grew up, the world was totally different than it is now. And that makes me so afraid because we grew up, it was, it was nothing like it is now. So I don't know how to parent in a world that like I didn't grow up in. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's very, very different. And that's the scary part. I mean, our kids are still young. They're eight and six, but you know. Who knows what's going to happen in the next 10 years where everything will be. And we didn't grow up with, you know, the internet and, and everything. So. No. And that's scary to me. All right. Here's something scary. Uh oh. Raven says, I'm just going to follow this now. I'm trying to follow this. Something plays hide and seek with my cat. This is going back to when we were talking uh -oh. about Frankie's haunted house. Something plays hide and seek with my cat and a shadow hides in the laundry room. Cat never checks there. Sell that house or burn it to the ground. All my candles will turn on. Oh, all my battery candles will turn on by themselves, even unscrewed. I'm haunted too. Nope. No. Oh my God. People. I could never. I could never yeah. live in that house. Yeah. I'm scaring the shit out of myself right now just to be <laughs> in my house. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Once we are done, I'm probably going to run upstairs. I still laugh to this day of whoever was that made that video where the woman turns the light off. She's like, this is how I turn the light off in my house. She turns the light off. <laughs> takes off in the other direction oh i will not i don't do that this, this guy in like a boogeyman costume comes running <laughs> oh, that's so mean no that's why you have to have, we have lights we have a light switch at the bottom of our steps and we have a light switch at the top of our steps but that's the i know but that's the joke that she's like this is what i think is gonna happen to me which is why i turn off the light every i have that i have that fright i run up the steps when you're not home at night i will put the kids to bed and go into our room and shut the door and lock it and our kids are in their rooms and that's it everyone fend for themselves i'm not leaving this room <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a mercury so do i cuddles yeah, a lot see? of people i think are like I, that i it's every I, we've seen all these crazy movies and now i'm scared that's why i hate fucking windows i'm scared that, that you know what movie did it to me fucking scream with mm -hmm. drew barrymore <laughs> right there at the windows th that's it that did me in oh, you ever notice no nope, none of all of them i don't open shades because i'm fucking death afraid she cuddles will not open a shit. I come down sometimes, some days, and I'm like, it looks like midnight down here. Open bad. a fucking window. Nope. 
what you up to? Sometimes I open the windows and then I walk out of the room and then I hear and them I'm- closing my <laughs> right The shutters. Yeah, I don't like people looking in. Fuck that. The blinds and everything. It's always good. Nope. Oh <laughs> the best part, it'd be 11 o'clock in the morning, the shades are all drawn and the lights are on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the lights are on, yeah. I'll put the lights on. Oh my God, it's 11 o'clock, open the window, turn the light off. You get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll, you'll, wait, you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll flick the lights. Remember when you tease me? And you flip the lights and be like, can you still see? Do you need more light? Like, what's going on? I'm like, idiot. No, because you and your kids turned me into the light asshole. That I, I have to turn off all the lights now, all the yeah. time. Well, I have to shut every closet because you open every fucking door. So, what's, true. what's the trade-off? So, I, I'm walking by the, and and cuddles and the two kids are in the kid they're in their room which faces the sunny we i don't know i thought the sun rose in one part of the world it doesn't the sun rises and sets in the in in the east here where we are because the the sun is baking on our kids room all day long it's the brightest room in the house always i walk by they're all in there the blinds are open. The sunlight is beaming in, and I look past them, and I see that the light, the little tiny light in the room, is on. <laughs> so I turn the light off, and I go, "Can you guys still see?" <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Nothing changes. That's because it's an LED light, and it takes a cu- it takes like a minute to get bright. <laughs> so if you would have sh- left it on, like you know, <laughs> shut up, shut up. Oh shit! Uh, Raven says, "Cuddles, you would burn my my place to the ground." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't go for that haunted shit. I do, and I do not. I do. Not every single noise that I hear in our house. I'm like, Aunt, what was that? You're like, it's the fucking heat going on. And I'm like, oh, okay. Just checking. Yeah, Yeah, the heat goes on. The house is like pressurized. So the heat goes on, wind blows. So if a door is like slightly almost open, it'll just open. Oh my God. What about when we, what about when we open the windows and then the breeze comes in and one of the doors closes (sighs) and I fucking freak the fuck out. I'm like, there's someone in the house. And now we have cameras all over the house. You can walk into my house. You can't do anything because you're on candid camera. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, there's, there's nothing. You, 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 we will get you in every single corner of our house. I'm like, oh my God, someone's in the house. And you're like, no one's in the fucking house. The breeze just shut the door. <laughs> Uh, it's so true. All right, Cuddles. I think we're out of time. I was going to talk about Candace Owens, but I suddenly don't care so much anymore. Yeah, that's all right. I'm, I'm all right with that. I don't think we can skip that one. Um, this was a fun one. I hope you guys enjoyed this little trip down parental lane with Cuddles and I. And our, and our two children who we probably... Who, who said it? We messed up? They're horrible kids? Yeah, they're bad. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're I've, bad kids. All right. I think that was some more Prince Prince Middleton fallout. Princess Middleton, excuse me, fallout there. So, yeah, we're not going to tell our daughter that someone said that about us because then our daughter's going to hunt them down and try to fuck them up. So, mm. Mm. truth, you can't mess with our daughter. Absolutely not. I try not to. I'm terrified. So is our son. <laughs> I tell people that when they talk about it, I'm like, she, I'm like, my daughter runs shit. I'm like, she just she runs does. shit. I know she's like ready to kill when I hear Michael screaming, "Mom, yeah. she won't stop! Yeah. Mom, help me!" <laughs> yeah. Uh, Robin says, "Great show, Aunt Cuddles. I appreciate that. I Thank hope you enjoyed you. it. I we I enjoyed myself. I hope you enjoyed yourself, Cuddles. I did. I did. I really did." First time she's ever said that to me when I asked her that. So that's amazing. That's a big feeling Aww, tonight. See? Big episode. Um, good night to everybody. Mercury, night. Brian, everybody. Cuddles, Neil. Appreciate you guys all being here. Linda. Um, we're done. We'll be back on Monday. Uh, yes. We're keeping our eye on the Trump building thing. That might be the big story that day. So we got that and a bunch more. Uh, and everybody else. And maybe a blind top five or a last person standing. Who knows? Cuddles. Yeah. Thank you.
<laughs> You're welcome. Have a great weekend, everyone. Go Enjoy. Meat potato salad. Maybe we should go now. <laughs>